Peter Buswell for DrVOIP.com with a recommendation on how best to back up your Shortel deployment and to back it up off-site, protected in a cloud uh, with uh, multiple data centers and fully automated and at a price point uh, that you find very difficult to duplicate within your own facility. So go to Amazon Web Services, open an account, take you 10 minutes at max. Um, if you have an Amazon book buying account, that'll work. Just go ahead and, and uh, log in. Um, it will take you to the management workstation, uh, the console, where you will have uh, a list of the various services available in the cloud. Uh, for example, the EC2 or Elastic Computing, uh, which we uh, will do a future video on, show you how to actually move a Shortel server into the cloud and how to create high availability disaster recovery solutions using Amazon uh, as your cloud provider. Um, there are a number of uh, storage solutions available. Uh, Glacier is a storage solution if you want to archive for the long term. If you, you know, it's not something you would do, use for a disaster recovery because it probably takes you three or four hours to schedule uh, data retrieval. The storage gateway is a bit of a hybrid solution in which you uh, have uh, equipment on-prem backed up to the cloud. But today what we want to take a look at is a simple scalable storage, the S3 um, storage solution from Amazon. Uh, if you go ahead and click on that, the first time you click on it, it's going to take you to um, a one, two, three type of uh, uh, tutorial on how to create your first storage system. So I've already created a storage uh, system, a storage solution, and once you have that in place, you're going to want to go ahead and, and just create a bucket. Think of a bucket as something like a uh, folder in a um, normal file system. Uh, not entirely accurate, but for purposes of discussion, that'll work. So we're going to create a bucket. We're going to give it a name. We're going to select a region. Uh, um, simply stated, Amazon has uh, facilities, data centers all over the world, uh, several throughout the United States. Each of these uh, data centers has uh, an availability uh, resource in within the various data centers. So Northern California may have several, East Coast may have several. For purposes of discussion, uh, since we're not concerned about the location, we're just going to say uh, US standard and go ahead and create uh, your bucket. And you can see that's just about how quickly uh, and how easy it is to create the bucket. Making the bucket available is even more uh, easy. There, there um, are a couple of uh, points that you will want to remember. You're going to have to um, set up some permissions. Uh, permissions uh, are uh, granted by the owner or the administrator in this account uh, to individuals. Uh, you create users and then like you would any other uh, domain environment, you would uh, imbue those uh, users with particular privileges for accessing resources. Uh, you will uh, grant the permissions by applying a policy um, to your bucket. Um, policies, again, this is not a tutorial on Amazon, so I'm not going to drill down on this other than tell you it's real simple. It's uh, you can either use the Amazon generator, you can get sample uh, bucket policies, uh, create or, or edit an existing uh, policy. There are all types of solutions. Uh, just go ahead and apply um, a policy. Think of the policy as, uh, as a way of providing or granting permissions to the bucket. 
Uh, you will also need uh, certain security uh, credentials which were established when you open your account. Um, these are can be generally um, uh, summarized as uh, uh, security keys and security identities uh, that uh, you will apply to a bucket or to your entire storage subsystem. Um, when you open the account, you'll be granted them. You'll never be able to retrieve them again, but you can continue to uh, create new ones. So I've uh, already created uh, and saved uh, offline uh, my access keys and my secret access key, which will be needed uh, in order for me to um, access the bucket uh, from my Shortel server. So once that's uh, accomplished, you're set up and good to go. You will have uh, created um, a uh, bucket to move your data to uh, from your Shortel server. And it's going to live in the Amazon cloud, and it's going to benefit uh, by the tremendous amount of resources and knowledge and experience that Amazon has gained. So uh, now that we've got the bucket set up, let's go take a look at some uh, solutions on the client side for moving your Shortel data folders up to this cloud. So now that we've uh, created our S3 storage solution. Let's take a look at some ways of attaching that uh, bucket in the cloud to your Shortel headquarters server. Let's take a look at the CloudBerry drive. I've already downloaded the uh, trial version and I will go ahead and run that. It pops it up here in your toolbar. And at that point, uh, you can just go ahead and click on it. And uh, let's go ahead and get it set up. First time we set it up, we're going to uh, create a new storage account. Go ahead and add that. Let's display it uh, as uh, Amazon S3. Now, if you remember in the previous uh, video, they focused on the management console in AWS. Uh, we showed you where to get your access keys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this. I'll delete it later, so don't even bother to try and um, copy this. But I've just copied it over to my um, notepad so that I can easily add it here. And then at that point, uh, you can go ahead and test your connection. It should test successfully. And at that point, um, we have created a drive on the CloudBerry that actually adds this as a um, map drive. Uh, pick whatever you want. Go ahead and make this um, drive uh, S for short tail. At that point, um, we've, we've uh, going to select the um, S3 uh, bucket here. And at that point, we'll go ahead and mount that drive. Um, and as you can see, we have the Shortel headquarters. Um, we've added a new drive. If I go to drives here, do, do, do. we can see here that uh, we have, in fact, added the Shortel AWS as a drive on our headquarters server. And at this point, we can go ahead and uh, uh, make use of it as a storage uh, device to do backups. Um, you know, take the Shortel data folder and just go ahead and drop it into the cloud. You can also use the uh, backup scripts that Shortel provides, um, or you can use your uh, favorite backup utility. The goal, however, was to get your Shortel data folder and all of its contents 
everything you need to restore uh, the system uh, to bare metals, um, including your configuration database, um, you should go ahead and be able to move all of this over to the cloud. I hope you have found uh, this informative and I thank you for viewing.